it's time to open up the, the panel for, you know, to the audience in terms of questions. I'll start with Winnie. You mentioned you, you spend a lot of your, um, your presentation going through the issue of energy usage and carbon. And you concluded with a building actually showing how you're looking at doing a zero energy in, chi in China. That is what's in Germany. It's in Germany, okay. Not the building in Germany, but the tower. In this was in of, Siberia. In Siberia, in Siberia, sorry, my apologies, in Siberia. In terms of um, where you've got some of waste minus 20, and what you've, what you've um, put together to form a building of that typology, do you see that being used in somewhere where the issues are different, like in the Middle East, where the temperatures are a lot higher? How do you see that being dealt with? Definitely. Uh, when we work in uh, the Middle East, and Helmut could answer that too, because we developed a series of solutions, as other colleagues did, you need much more exterior shading, much more. In my opinion, if you do something in the Middle East, exterior shading is the A and O. Mm. Whereas in Siberia, where we have very long darkness, etc., where the people are really reaching out for a little bit of sun, we can't have that. So we have to have a full glazing, but the glass quality, of course, has to fit the situation. This didn't fit in this uh, you know, subject, and obviously time is uh, not... Uh, wasn't available, but I maintain that uh, the most intelligent and the most effective way to actually uh, uh, make an effect on sustainability and, and saving resources at, at, and at the same time improving the comfort and the environment inside those buildings is actually through design and not through adding a lot of equipment, mm. because as we all know, uh, it takes 30, 40 years till this pays off, uh, uh, that uh, it takes a lot of cleaning, photovoltaic, this evacuated tubes, I mean, we found out we had to clean this every day, mm. otherwise the effectiveness goes down. So, but sunlight, uh, fresh air, water, <coughs> the earth are all natural resources which we, if we in, tap in it in an intelligent way, and if we design a building, you know, that, and this isn't always possible, depending where the building is, uh, or, or uh, uh, that, that the envelope is efficient, that the structure is efficient. Structure is actually one of the most overlooked sustainable features of a building, especially when we talk about a tall building. And I think we know how many buildings are built where the structure just serves just to make the building higher and higher, and not because it makes any sense. And, uh, and uh, uh, so I, 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 I think that, that the profession, uh, uh, architects and engineers, can uh, you know, and, and there's nothing changed over all the centuries that the buildings which make the most sense work the best and they generally look the best and they keep looking the best and they get better with age. Mm. Not to contradict but to add, I think, and we did that in our buildings, we need a certain degree of technology, definitely. And this is not NASA technology or so, it's just a handheld and it's a little bit of whatever, sensors and so on. But it must be robust, because even the uneducated inhabitants, they should get along with it. Robustness in a positive understood way, not in this terrorism thing. Robustness is of the technological systems is important. I, I, I personally think that we, sometimes we talk about sustainability, but we just, as engineers and architects, we lose the, the basis of sustainability. Mm. And that is when you design a building, use absolute minimum material. Go Fair with a span a that are optimized. Don't use a span of 18 meters, for instance, on a steel building with a 600 deep 
floor member because you will use embodied energy. However, people, I mean, as architect and engineer, we are often forced into creating buildings that are, are, that use a lot of steel, for instance, or use a lot of concrete. I think as engineer, if we think about collaborating with the architect to come up with engineering solution for a building that is actually optimized, and then review the architect structure of the building and see uh, what is the material? How can we improve the material by, like for instance, in, we, we're talking about all type of different mechanical system, but we just have to look at some cement replacement and how to do the cement replacement in the concrete and how to make it more viable. When you design a floor, work with the architect, come up with a span that are made for that type of floor construction, optimize the steel in there, minimize the thickness, and when you multiply 25 millimeter by 60 floor, you save a lot of body energy. And, and people just totally forget about that when you're designing the, the building. It's, it's all about what can we do to make it different. I mean, you, one thing you mentioned, one thing that was mentioned which I think is relevant is Population growth, government's involvement in terms of what the German government is doing, what the European government is doing. How do you see, as engineers and architects, we can persuade the authorities to actually push the limit so that we are either forced or we are given the, um, the resource to actually do the research and, do, and changing people's mind to understand that not just are we using so much energy, but we're also producing so much carbon. Where do you see, as professionals, how can we influence this? Two sentences and then I stop talking. The first is we need the research money from the government, but never expect the government to give us the rules. Yeah. We have to bring up the rules by ourselves. This must be a bottom-up thing. So first rule is no SUV any longer. <laughs> and there's a series of other ones. <laughs> Well, I, I think we, we can do a lot just to make the public aware of the, of the problem. Uh, you know, I have somebody that lives in Canada, when I first moved to the UK, I thought it was interesting that there were one and two bedroom homes here, because in Canada they're, they're quite massive. They're, and uh, I think we saw on, on, on Werner's plot that there is uh, significant energy consumption in some of those countries. and. People just need to be educated about the problem so that they can start fixing it. It's not easy. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for a good discussion and a good presentation. Thank you. Thank you.